Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edisad Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that we have started a series on religion, culture and society in modern Indian, hist in, in, in Indian history. Today we have brought yet another lecture in a similar series for you. In this lecture we will try and understand the religion in Harappan civilization. As we know that Harappan civilization is one of the oldest civilizations of the world. And religion in Harappan civilization was the first civilizational religion in his history. The religion by the very um, nature of it was not organized, it was not uniform. Rather the religion in Harappan civilization had the element of multiplicity. The religion was nature worshipping and there was a uh, special emphasis on fertility cult. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. O.P. Singh. Dr. Singh is associate, is associate professor in the Department of History in Delhi College of Arts and Commerce. So, let's welcome Dr. Singh and ask him and get to know more about Harappan religion. Hello, sir. Thank you, Amrit. Thank you so much and good afternoon, viewers. Uh, as Amrit introduced the topic that it's a series on religion, society and culture in Indian history and in that series this is a topic on religion, in fact first lecture on religion. Now today we are going to discuss Harappan religion. Harappa as we know is one of the ancient civilizations that flourished in the world and in this context uh, we have divided this lecture into two modules. The first module will be focusing on the features of the religion where we shall be trying to reconstruct Harappan religion with various dynamics of the religion, looking, taking into account various sources and uh, other you know, auxiliary sources, main sources as well as auxiliary sources to discuss the issue and we shall try to come to a conclusion about the religion in the second module of this lecture where we shall be describing it, we shall be looking at the interpretations of this religion and the implications of this religion. Now <clears throat> coming to the issue religion, we know that religion in fact is one of the most fundamental elements of any culture. In fact, uh, it is a reflection of the spiritual world of the people that is reflected in day to day life and that it also benefits from you know the experience of the people in day to day life. Thank you. Now we know that various institutions of modern times such as dance, music, painting and even festivals which have become secular now, in fact they owe their origin to religion only. It was religion which in various forms supported and patronized these institutions and over a period of time these features have become you know uh, secular and very important segment of the culture. Now as far as culture and religion is concerned, it is not possible to segregate the two. Culture is integral part of, religion is integral part of culture and religion benefits from, from culture as well as religion supports culture in various ways to you know entrench it in the social milieu. Now we have uh, so many reasons for evolution of religion that we are not going to discuss at this point of time. But we can say that religion is very closely associated with mode of production. In any society, the prevalent mode of production affects the religion and thus the religion is benefited from the prevalent mode of production. Now, if there is a change in prevalent mode of production, there will be change in religion as well to some extent. However, this statement should not be taken you know, in a very narrow sense of terms. So, it is not necessarily important to have a change in religion 
a change in mode of production. Now, coming to Harappan religion, because Harappa was an agrarian, agrarian society, agrarian culture, and if we look at the subsistence pattern of Harappa, the predominant economic activity of the people was agriculture. So, Harappan religion is also full of symbols taken from the agrarian world. There are so many aspects that we shall be uh, looking in this lecture and this lecture unfolds gradually that directly or indirectly most of the aspects of you know uh, religion are influenced to some extent by agrarian activities. Now, nevertheless, Harappan religion is not uniform, you do not find uniformity throughout the civilization because you know Harappa was a large civilization extending from the borders of Persia to the in the west to you know uh, uh, up to western Uttar Pradesh in UP and from uh, Jammu in north up to Maharashtra, Daimawad in south. So, in it was a very large area and the civilization is, was spread in this area and in this civilization though it was a it was an urban civilization we find uniformity to some extent as far as town planning is concerned as far as weights and measures is concerned and so many other things are concerned but as far as religion is concerned there is no uniformity that is witnessed in harappan religion we have various streams and various trends of Harappan religion in this entire area throughout the period of Harappan civilization. Now, to understand any aspect of culture in history, we need to rely on certain sources and to understand religion also, we need to rely on certain sources. Now, as far as uh, As far as sources are concerned, we have so many of them. In general terms, the most important indicator of a religion is religious structure, if it is available. Because you know, till uh, about pre, uh, till about post Mauryan times, rather Mauryan times, we hardly have any religious structure related to any religion and the earliest structure that comes that too belongs to Buddhism. So, you need to have religious structure if available, but here in this case there are hardly any structure that can be termed as religious structure. Then uh, another uh, source can be iconography, this iconography includes uh, sculpture, then images on seals, tablets and amulets etcetera etcetera and this is largely available in Harappan civilization and in fact this becomes our most important source of uh, history of religion in Harappan civilization. Then archaeological material also which is directly or indirectly related to religious activity becomes a source of uh, you know uh, source of history for understanding religion and another important source are grave and burials which discuss the burial pattern and that tell tells a lot about people's belief in life after death which is also directly or indirectly related to religious activities. And in recent times, ethnography has become another important tool of understanding any religion. In fact, ethnography is basically uh, the practice of looking at past from the vantage point of present. So, these are the sources on the basis of which any religion or any religious activity is constructed from any period of time. Now, as far as Harappan civilization is concerned, of all these sources, the iconography, whether available in the form of sculpture or from seals, 
because seals are very important source of information for Harappan civilization. So far more than 4000 seals have been discovered and these seals contain various symbols apart from the uh, script of the Harappans that has not been deciphered so far. So iconography obtained from sculpture, images from seals, they are the most useful tools to understand Harappan religion. Now seals, figurines and then there are paintings on pottery as well because Harappan on typical Harappan potteries, we have some paintings and those paintings also have images that can help us in understanding of Harappan religion. Besides inscriptive notations are also important source of uh, Harappan religion to speak on. So these are the major sources of Harappan religion on which we shall be coming to some conclusion in today's lecture. But apart from it, uh, you have the great bath at Mohanjodaro and fire altars obtained from a few other places which are also important source of history uh, to understand Harappan religion. Now <clears throat> coming to the features of Harappan religion and looking at the various streams and trends of Harappan religion. We find that the religious beliefs of Harappan people can be studied under four parts. These are iconolatry, that is idol worship, animism, that is belief that all plants and objects have spirits and with this belief they worship various plants as well, jolatry, that is animal worship and ritualism popularly known in Hindi as karma card. So these four streams of religion are visible in Harappan religion. Now coming to iconolatry first, iconolatry can be studied under two heads again. There are so many images which are very important from the point of view of Harappan religion, but two images are of special interest for a student of history to understand Harappan religion. The one is mother goddess and the other is proto Siva. Now mother goddess or the worship of mother, mother goddess can be traced to the earliest stages of human society. There are large number of female figurines of terracotta that have been recovered from various places in Harappan civilization and this in fact speak a lot about the belief of the people in the cult of mother goddess. Now these figurines have been interpreted as symbolic expressions of fertility cults. See the fertility cult is important for Harappan people because basically it was an agrarian civilization. And they were the earliest agriculturists and so they depended, they depended completely on agricultural produce for their survival. In this way agriculture becomes very important for them. Now what happens that agriculture is a process that is beyond the control. It is a process that is controlled by the nature and nature is beyond control of human being. So they took this force that produced grains, I mean in agriculture, they, this, they believed that there was certain force or that there was some, some sacred force or mysterious force that was controlling everything and that mysterious force for Harappan people becomes you know uh, earth goddess. And over a period of time, this earth goddess is uh, earth goddess is equated with mother goddess cult. So, in such a way, what we find that they have tremendous 
belief in mother goddess cult as it is suggested by certain scholars. Now, it has been challenged as well. Now, if, if we look at the these figurines, we find that the genital parts of this mother goddess figurines are very prominently displayed. These figurines are highly ornamented and in certain figurines there are marks of essence burning as well, suggesting that probably these were worshipped. Now, these figurines because Marcel is the first person who spoke uh, in a very organized way on Harappan religion. Marx, uh, Marcel has interpreted these figurines and he has suggested that some of the figurines can be equated with Sakambari of later times. Sakambari is a goddess who is equated with earth goddess or related to fertility. And then he says that not all mother goddess figurines, but some of them are related to Sakambari cult and some are votive, votive figurines, which were used at certain time and then discarded. But Mar uh, Marcel's, uh, you know, idea, though it is uh, well conceived, but it has been challenged by various scholars. Siri Ratnagar is one such a scholar who does not believe in the idea of mother goddess and at least those figurines which are suggested to be mother goddess by Marcel. So, what Sirin Ratnagar has suggested is that, that these figurines seem to be the male's expression of female sexuality and according to her these are not more than decorative pieces. So, for her these were basically decorative pieces and not related to any cult or you know worship. Nevertheless, though Marcel has suggested and it has also been well established that all over the world in the early agrarian society there was a practice of worship of mother goddess in the form of terracotta figurines and the dominant historiography considers these figurines as the figurines of mother goddess. Then <coughs> there is another figurine, another seal rather, it is a seal which is, uh, which has been very, you know, extremely um, debated amongst the scholarly, um, amongst the scholars and this seal is actually of a person, it, it, see, it contains the image of a person who is sitting on a throne who is sometimes surrounded by animals, sometimes he is alone, then he is with a headgear on his uh, head and uh, you know with head, this headgear contains you know leaves sprouting out, the, out of that headgear and he is sitting in a straight posture. Now, this image is represented in several media. It is represented in uh, stratite seals, it is represented in terracotta tablets, it is represented in, it is also found on certain copper plates which have been engraved. But the best known and the most debated seal is the one that has been leveled as seal number 420, which was reported by Mackey in his report. And this is popularly known as the Pasupati seal. Now, what we have in this seal is that, that there is a man who is seated on a dais, he is wearing a horn dress, headdress, horn headdress, his legs are bent, her heels are together and the toe is pointed towards, uh, towards the lower side. This, il, this image is flanked by four animals and these four animals are, you know, uh, an elephant, a tiger, a buffalo and a rhinoceros. And on the bottom of this dais, there are two animals which have been variously identified as um, ibexes or, uh, you know, deers. Now, Marcel has interpreted this seal as the seal of 
Pasupati Siva. The reason he cites is that, that the person is sitting in a posture that is, that, that is of a yogi's posture. The person is sitting in yogic posture, yogic mudra and it is surrounded by various animals. So the person represented in this seal is the master of those animals, lord of those animals. Now Siva is also known as Mahayogi because of his uh, traits, he is also called Mahayogi and Siva is also called Pasupati. Now this image as per Marshall has three faces and then this again according to Marshall matches with the criteria of Siva. So according to Marshall this seal, this person belong in, represented on this seal is Lord Siva and he calls it Pasupati Siva. However, this has been questioned by a number of his scholars. Nilkant Sastri has questioned the tricephalic features of this seal. According to him, there are not three faces of this image. Uh, it's, a, it's some misinterpretation by Marcel. Another scholar, Saltor, he has equated the image with that of Lord Agni of uh, Hindu religion. Now, there is a, an altogether different interpretation by Sulivan and Suvangna Atre. Both Sulivan and Suvangna Atre have interpreted this seal as a female figurine. Suvangna Atre calls this figurine as the lady of the beast and not lord of the beast as Marcel has suggested. But Possel has defended Marcel and according to Possel, it, uh, there are m more similarities of this image with the Siva and this seal can be sort of a prototype of Siva and so it can be accepted as Pasupati or Proto Siva seal. And even dominant historiography also calls it a prototype of Siva only. Then uh, there is another seal uh, which has seven images and this seal has been interpreted variously by various uh, scholars. Possel for example, uh, because there are seven images, one is not sure whether these images are of male or female, but there are seven images of um, human beings and Possel calls them the images of the seven rivers of rig, uh, Rigvedic area or Indus Valley area. In fact, to some extent he equates it with the Sapta Sandho concept of Rigvedic uh, concept of seven rivers. However, Alchin and Alchin have a different explanation for it and they suggest that these are the seven sages or the Saptarsis famous in uh, Hindu mythology or it can be the Saptamatrikaj or the seven mothers. So there are various interpretations. Parpul, another important scholar, he says that these are the children of Brahma and Saraswati, but these are all speculations because the seals as we said in the beginning contain the inscriptions of Harappans and those inscriptions because have not been deciphered. So these are only speculations and nothing more than that. But nevertheless, they show some similarity that can be equated with certain features of uh, Brahmanical religion. Then uh, associated with the fertility cult is another evidence that comes in the form of linga and yoni. Now linga are uh, male genitals and jonis are female genitals and existence of linga and joni from various places suggesting to be uh, the piece of worships though it has been doubted by certain scholars that whether these were these were items that were worshipped or not but nevertheless these have been obtained in the form of linga and joni and that again relates to um, brahmanical mythologies so uh, it can be said to be that this is again indirectly related to fertility cult. Now 
another uh, aspect of harappan religion is animism and here you have various evidence of worships of plants and trees we have evidence of worships of um, trees like people tulsi etc etc so why these trees were worshiped animism is a feature that in, you know implants uh, life into non living beings and then it is worshiped but why these trees and worships were worshiped there are two interpretations for it one there was these were worshiped probably because of their medicinal values or probably they were worshiped because of the belief in the spirits of the trees now there is a very interesting seal that has been discovered in the civilization and in this seal there is an image of a person who is at the top of a tree who is holding a branch in his hand and is trying to drive away an animal that is trying to eat the leaves of that tree now this has been interpreted in two ways one either the person is the spirit of the tree who is angry with the animal and is punishing it or it can also be interpreted as it is a person who is trying to protect the tree from the animal <clears throat> now the third uh, feature of harappan religion is jewelry in this feature we have remains terracotta figurines and images of various animals like fish snake lion bull rhinoceros monkey cats dog etc etc <clears throat> now an attempt has been made by certain scholars to associate some of these animals like fish boar tortoise and unicorn with incarnations of vishnu and thereby trying to connect brahmanism or hinduism with harappan religion but this is in fact over simplification uh, of the evidence as it will be very difficult to place other other figurines like dogs and cats with a different uh, dogs and cats with no uh, where will where will one place dogs and cats recovered in the same context along with you know boars and fishes and tortoises so it's uh, it can be suggested that jewelry was a practice but not all the animals were practiced some of the animals were some of the animals were worshiped but not all the animals were worshiped now there are certain uh, animals which are composite or artificial in nature and they have been reported in certain seals martial has categorized them as mythical semi mythical and real animals and this can be of multiple types uh, you know this can be of multiple types like you have two animals in one seal you have a human and a animal in one seal like a tiger and human combination a bull and elephant combination a ram a bull and an elephant combination beside unicorn has also been you know uh, recovered and so this cannot be directly related to the worship of these animals but then the depiction of these animals on these seals definitely calls for certain explanation thank you <clears throat>
Hello viewers, uh, in this part we shall be discussing the remaining part of the features of Harappan civilization apart from the interpretation and implications of this religion in Harappan society, in contemporary religion and uh, on to some extent on economy as well. But as we are discussing in our first part, we had discussed three features, three streams of Harappan religion that was uh, iconolatry, animism and geolatry. There is one more stream of Harappan religion uh, and that is a very significant part of Harappan religion though not very prominently displayed, but it has made its present felt presence felt in the field of religious arena or Harappan civilization and that is evidence of ritualism. Now we come across various evidence, symbols in fact, which can be termed as religious symbols. Swastika is one such symbol that has been discovered from certain Harappan seals and images and now it is generally believed that swastika was started by you know Hitler uh, during his crusade uh, of Aryanism. But nevertheless the fact is that swastika was first discovered, first witnessed in Harappan civilization and we know that till date swastika is used as a religious symbol. So this is one evidence. Now the great bath of Harappa is another important evidence of ritualism. We know that there was a great bath in Harappa, sorry Mohanjodaro, the great bath of Mohanjodaro. There was a great bath in Mohanjodaro and it was, it has been said to be a place for public bathing by some scholars and ritual bathing by some other scholars. Now if we look into the sluices of this bath, great bath, we find certain remains of grains. This is one evidence. Now Kosambi, D.D. Kosambi uh, have, who has taken clue from Mesopotamian civilization of Jagurath and Nimes, he has suggested that this great bath was a place of ritualism and people congregated here for religious bathing and after that they performed certain religious activities. However, uh, this has been doubted by later scholars who do not accept the fact that it was uh, meant for you know uh, religious purpose. By and large they believe that it was a place for normal, it was a normal place for day to day bathing purposes only. But, but the evidence of charred grains found from the sluices of this great bath is I mean is still puzzling and one can not discount the possibility of religious affiliation of great bath of Mohanjodaro. Then uh, there are evidence of fire altars discovered from various places. Fire altars in fact have been discovered from a number of places. Not all the altars can be assigned to be uh, rather can be associated with religious activities, but the two, one at Banwali and the other at Kalibangan, which has remains of charred grains, which has remains of charred bones, indicate towards the fact of ritualism. Because the rest of the fire altars that have been discovered from various other places can be termed to be. Uh, normal hearth fire in, that was burnt in the house. But these two fire altars from Banwali and Kalimangan suggest a strong possibility of these places being used as place of ritualism or sacrifice. So to some extent, again as we said in the beginning that to some extent it can be suggested that ritualism was another important stream of the Harappan religion. Then funerary practices are also a very significant marker of religious activities in any civilization. We hardly come across the cremation of dead 
in Harappan civilization what we have is that uh, they followed the practice of burials. Now along with these burials they have kept some grave goods or grave furniture as the archaeologists call and these grave goods include grains, some utensils, even some jewelry, but they are not very rich in their material culture. So though people believed, probably people believed that there was a life after the death and that is why they kept those great group, grave goods in the graves. But they did not you know keep put these things very liberally, probably they required it much more than the dead people. But nevertheless uh, it throws certain light about the idea of belief in life after death of Harappan people. <clears throat> now coming to the interpretation of this religion, we see that nowadays uh, with the development of a number of disciplines and development of interdisciplinary approach, uh, this religion has been studied by various scholars, scholars like archaeologists, anthropologists, social scientists and even Vedic scholars too. These scholars have contributed tremendously in the field of Harappan religion and some of the studies are in fact very serious attempts to understand the religious belief and practices of the Harappan people. Now in this category the first study was by John Marshall who was also one of the excavators of Harappan uh, sites and his study is, can be said to be the first serious attempt towards uh, towards the writing of Harappan religion in an organized way though the religion itself was not organized that we shall discuss right now. But he has tried to present Harappan religion in a very organized way in his writings though much of his conclusions have raised serious reservations and have been doubted. For example, as we discussed right now that the Pasupati seal who according to Marshall is that of that is there is a prototype seal of Lord Shiva or it is a Mahayogi or Pasupati whereas it has been doubted by various other prominent scholars as well. Nevertheless in prominent historiography the Pasupati seal is still you know taken to be as that of Proto Shiva or Pasupati Shiva. Apart from Marshall uh, other scholars who have contributed in the field of Harappan religion include Subhangna Atre. Harvard Sullivan, Selene Ratnagar, During Kaspers and Doris Srinivasan. And these scholars have looked at Harappan religion and various dynamics of Harappan religion from an interdisciplinary approach and that has put before the academic world a very rich information as far as Harappan religion is concerned and uh, that uh, is in fact really commendable. Now if we look at Harappan religion and the features that we have discussed so far, in fact there are more questions from Harappan religion than their answers. We know that Harappan language and Harappan script because Harappan script has not been deciphered. So Harappan language is not known and all that we have about Harappan language and script is only a speculation. So just like we speculate about their language, their script, similarly we can only speculate about their religion. There are several questions that are raised. Did they have a single belief system or there were multiple religions? Because if we look at certain writings which try to associate Harappan religion with later times Brahmanism or Hinduism, then this is not supported by the material culture and the sources about religion that we have in Harappa. 
did it spread beyond Harappan zone? Because we know that Harappan zone was within the particular territory from the border of Persia to western Uttar Pradesh and Jammu to Gujarat. So, in this area the civilization flourished and if the civilization flourished in this area then the religion too might have been located within this area only. But did this religion travel beyond this area, the mainland India that we call or North India? We are not sure. Can it be related to any modern religion in general and Hinduism in particular because latest trend is to uh, you know connect Harappan religion with Aryans and then uh, you know provide uh, anchor to the origin of Harappan culture in India only and Harappan religion provides a very good anchor. But was it really? We are not sure. What one can, one can broadly suggest is that that there are no single, there is no single religion throughout the period. We have various streams, we have various trends, we have sometimes we have iconolatry predominating jewelry, sometimes in some areas, in some sources, jewelry seems to be more predominant. But one can safely suggest that because it was an agrarian society and in agrarian society the fertility cult becomes important. So, the icons in the icons depicting fertility practices fertility cults were more predominant and probably iconolatry was more predominant. Then uh, it can also be just suggested that Harappan religion was not an organized religion. And this I am telling in the light of other contemporary civilizations which were more, much more organized. For example, Chinese civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, there you have organized priestly culture. Now, one reason for this may be that their script has been deciphered and we know much about their religion and we know less about Harappan religion. So, we can suggest that their other contemporary religions of the world were much organized. But whatever our handicap, the fact remains that it does not seem to be a very organized religion because the religion that we witness in Harappa basically seems to be an extension of the prehistoric religious practices. This is I am telling because the cult of mother goddess begins in Neolithic period. In Neolithic period with the beginning of agriculture, agriculture becomes important and so does become you know the power or mystery of production that is not understood, that is not understood and so they depend on a force and worship a force in the form of earth goddess which is later identified or merge, merges into mother, god, uh, mother goddess cult. But this is a prehistoric practice. Similarly, uh, totemism, animism, jewelry, these are all practices that were followed during prehistoric times and hardly any of them can be said to be a religion that is or that can be part of an organized religion or of a of a civilized religion with reference to other contemporary religion. <clears throat> this is probably uh, that because they did not rather they have not in fact probably they have not uh, discussed or portrayed or described any discrete god or goddess. We have doubt about Pasupati Siva. We have doubt about mother goddess. So, there is no discrete god or goddess that can be directly associated with Harappan religion. <clears throat> Nevertheless, uh, this religion that Harappan uh, civilization had has 
certain features that continues till date. Now, it whether we call it you know uh, the early form of Hinduism or Brahmanism, but then there are certain features that continue till date and it in fact should be taken more as a continuity of tradition and not as a continuity of any particular religion. For example, swastika is one such example that is used even today. Then another important example is the worship of Ling and Yoni. You know, Shiva is also worshipped in the form of Shiva and Parvati, his consort Parvati. They are worshipped in the form of Ling and Yoni. They are worshipped even today and they are worshipped, probably worshipped during Harappan civilization, Harappan religion as well. Then uh, in animism, the worship of people and Tulsi can be seen even today. Similarly, if the seal of uh, Pasupati Shiva or Proto Shiva is taken to be that of Shiva, then Shiva is also worshipped today. Now, these are all, this all should be taken as continuity of tradition uh, in a particular region passing from one generation to another generation. Now, another aspect related another aspect related with religion is its role in the process of urbanization. What we generally find that whenever a place develops as a religious center, there a, set, a population settles down which is not directly involved in agriculture. They provide various services like uh, food, worship material, puja material as they call it, then it, it will become a center of various arts and crafts and gradually it will turn to become a center of uh, you know trade as well. Very important example in this context is Varanasi of today or Banaras as we know it today. Now, whether Harappan religion had any role in the process of urbanization or not, we have no such direct evidence because none of Harappan centers, Harappan urban centers, either Harappa or Mohanjodaro, Chanudaro, Lothal, Kalimanga, none of these centers has produced any religious structure that can be related to, that can be said to be a place of religion or a religious structure and so it cannot be said that this place developed or flourished because of religion. But nevertheless in contemporary civilizations we have this evidence where in whether in Mesopotamia or in China that there were places which flourished because of the role of religion. So this is all that we have in the field of Harap, I mean as far as Harappan religion is concerned, this is this is all that we can have and that we shared with you. Now, thank you so much. Um, sir, um, just to uh, engage you in, in discussion over um, Harappan religion, sir, you mentioned that uh, uh, the um, you know the Neolithic culture with respect to uh, the worship of Mother Goddess and uh, um, which is you you said this is the practice of prehistoric times as well. Mm. In in the in this light, would you uh, shed on light on uh, the relationship between Harappan civilization and Mehrgarh civilization, which we know is a precursor to Harappan civilization? See, Harappan civilization is something that is urban civilization. When we say Harappan civilization, we mean urban civilization. But no urban center can come into existence until unless there are rural centers, mm. until unless there is hinterland, because that is the place that provides the surplus on which the cities survive. Mm. So to have urban centers, you need to have rural centers. Now, this will take the discussion to the origin of Harappan civilization, yes, yes, yes. because you know, Harappan civilization, as per one school of thought, developed 
somewhere in Mesopotamia. It was because of the people who of Mesopotamia who migrated from there in this region, they settled down and developed a civilization. The region, simple region behind this argument was that, that till about 1960s, 70s, there was no evidence of early beginning of agriculture in this region. The earliest agriculture was developed in Mesopotamian civilization in the um, valleys of Ephrates. Yes. So, that was the early and so it was a logical conclusion too that uh, because agriculture develops in Mesopotamia and Mesopotamia is in vicinity of this region. So, people from that uh, agrarian agricultural practicing people from that region migrated to this region and developed a civilization here as well. But there was always an opposition to this uh, what uh, historians call uh, they call it you know outside influence, outside influence theory. There was a group of historians who used to believe and that uh, the, there is a large number of archaeologists and historians who believe this till date that as long as agriculture was not discovered in this area, this theory was valid mm. or could have been accepted. Mm. But then it was in Mehargarh that we have the first beginning of agriculture around 5600 BC, even earlier than Mesopotamian sites. So, once agriculture begins in this area prior to Mesopotamia, there is no question of Mesopotamian civilization influencing Harappan civilization and then originating. Now, you have the significance of Mehagar lies in the fact that this is the place which has the earliest beginning of agriculture, which was within this civilization only, though it did not develop as an urban center, we do not know why, why Mehagar witnessed the first beginning of agriculture still it did not transform into an urban center. But Mehargar provides evidence of earliest beginning of agriculture. Apart from it, here you have some evidence of inter-regional relationship as well, because Mehargar is in you know landlocked area. Mm. But from Mehargar, they have discovered from Neolithic level things like sea cells. Now, sea cells could have come from Gujarat coast or near because nearby is Gujarat coast from Gujarat coast. So there was some interlink, and this interlink is link can be termed as practice of trade as well. Mm -hmm. So, you have beginning and Mehargar provides the beginning of this civilization, though it itself does not transform itself into a, uh, into an urban center. Achha. Um Sir, if, um, let, uh, if you just shed more light on the nature of uh, religion in Harappan civilization, would you say was it secular uh, civilization, Harappan civilization? Was it secular? In, in terms of modern understanding of sec world secular? See, uh, it is a very specific question that probably could have been answered if we had been able to read their ins scripts, scripts. But so far as I suggested and as the stream of this religion shows, in fact, there were four races. That's four right. races have been identified in uh, Harappan civilization. This includes uh, Proto Astrolaid, Mongolaid, Negroid, and Alpine. Hmm. Four races are there. Now, these, because there were four races, so definitely there would have been different cultures, practices. And these different culture practices are reflected in different streams of religion in Harappan civilization as well. So, going by that ext uh, going by that evidence rather, because you have evidence of different races and different races are, and then there is evidence of different streams of religion, and all are coexisting. It can be said to be a secular religion. Acha, so um, the last question I have is that, um, what is the significance you see uh, Harappan civilization has even for the present times and as it is uh, the religion Harappan civilization what 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 significance do you um, give to this um, this concept no in fact i summarize the whole idea in two three lines that uh, means civilization or religion 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 because there is no uniformity in the religion you find different streams you find different trends if and this is 
quite obvious because of people of different races are residing in this area. So, it is quite obvious. It is not organized as in other contemporary civilizations, but as I also pointed out that because other contemporary civilization, in other contemporary civilizations, the scripts have been deciphered. Mm. So, we know more about them. Mm. We do not know more about them. So, probably this idea to be can be changed if the script is deciphered and probably it will be I mean, more organized and you know more interesting for us to see. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank you sir for this very enlightening and engaging discussion and dear friends we hope that with today's discussion you have gained ample amount of knowledge regarding Harappan her, her civilization and its religion as well. On that note thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Thank you.